Hi folks, Howard at Raglan Piano Company. Had a new experience this week, uh, touching up the finish on a blonde pickled oak finish. I've heard it called different things. Uh, pan over here, Connie. This finish was real popular, I think, sometime during the 1950s. We had a customer that wanted to get it darkened, which we do, which is where we overcoat it with a dark lacquer, and then changed her mind, kind of once we had already started. Um, besides that, the arms had really shown some wear and dirt and filth, and I think at one point in time there was a smoker in the family that had a lot of kind of like nicotine on it and so forth. So um, I played with it a little bit, had to do a little research on the internet. This was my first time actually trying to salvage the uh, blonde finish that was common. Um, so I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I learned. There are several companies that make this uh, color wash. It's a, it's a white wash and basically, I mean, it is white, white, white. So white that it really was not matching very well with what the old, this age finished was. And I'm sure if you sanded this down to bare oak is what this is, sand it down to the bare oak and then uh, color it with that, it'd look great. But what I decided to do is get some water-based latex paint to mix with this to come up with a color that was a little bit closer to what the piano color is that we're roughly trying to match. Uh, so I'm gonna show you all in a little section right here. I've already done the arms, learning how to do it. Well, you know, learning on camera seemed like a really bad thing to do. And these came out much better than they were. Come on over here. The uh, finish was a lot more, is actually even worse than this right here, uh, where the, uh, the this uh, wash coat had worn through to the wood underneath and it gotten real filthy and dirty. So we're gonna sand this and then apply a new coat of the whitewash, wipe it down, let y'all take a look at it. All right, so basically all I did was I took 220 grit sandpaper and I just sanded it down, got all the old dirt and fingerprints. We already wiped it with, uh, with a wax wash, a wax cleaning compound. Uh, we actually just use naphtha. So I wiped it down with naphtha. Okay, so we've cleaned that up a little bit. Actually, it doesn't look bad like that. Let's carry through and do this anyway. All right, now then, you'll have to play with it to kind of get the color that you're looking for. But basically what we do is you apply it across the grain, per the instructions on the can. Now, I don't really think it matters. You can stir it in. The point is to get it worked into the grain of the wood and then to almost immediately wipe it off and i have found that i prefer to make a couple of passes one quick one just to get the majority of it off kind of blend start blending it a little blend it in a little bit with the second one anywhere that you've gotten too much on there just wipe it off and then on a the second pass here i'll go and i blend it in And again, now I'm new to this. And like most, uh, like most touch up, it's not perfect, but it's better. We're gonna do another section right here. This is called the key slip, and there's a lot of finger oils and such that have discolored the, uh, the wood here. We've already wiped this down with a degreaser, and I'm gonna sand it now. This is just 220 grit paper on a flexible sanding block. Now would also be the time to go ahead and replace the rubber bumpers, which we do sell in our eBay store. Should you need those, let me get that out. These are actually rubber head nails. It's just a nail with a rubber head on it. And those are. They crystallize with age. We're going to put new ones on there. Alrighty. Back to our regularly scheduled sanding. You'll notice as I sand through that top glaze coat, the wood reddens up a little bit.
And here's a little example right here. This was just a bare piece of an inexpensive um, underlayment here. And I applied a little bit of the color I had mixed up right here. And you can see the color difference right there, kind of the, the wash look that it gives it right there. Lightens it up a little bit. Alrighty, wipe this down right here. Alright, get my paint that I've got here. And let's just work it in really, really well. Because we're not this, we're just putting it on here and working it into the grain, and then we wipe across the grain to remove the excess. It will start drying if you don't. Now, obviously here I'm just working it into the grain. I could work it into the grain this way if I wanted to, but I think I'll do that on the subsequent part. And then right here, I'll do the same thing. As tempting as it is to wipe long ways, I've already learned not to do that because we are trying to work this into the grain to get the proper look. I'm gonna come back through in a minute and smooth this out. You'll, you can even notice on some parts of the piano where they applied the uh, wash and then didn't wipe it back off and it's just a big thick coat of whitewash on the cabinet part. And again, this isn't perfect, it's just going to be better than it was. Really that's what touch up is, is getting something looking 90% better. This is already starting to dry on me. You know what, I'm gonna make the long pass this way. And then we're gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna set it on fire. Not really. I'm gonna kinda dampen this again real quick. Obviously it's for larger areas, you'd either have to work quicker than I'm working or work it in areas. And I'm not sure how you blend that. Okay, here we go, right here. New spot here, work it in, work it in, work it in. I'm just trying to get where we don't see these little lines here where it wasn't very even. Yeah, actually I think I like that a little bit. After working it into the grain, making a final pass with the grain, with just a dab on it to smooth that out. I'm gonna let that dry and see how it looks. All right, I've also found that a little bit of a scotch bright kind of helps smooth out some of the uh, inconsistencies in the glazed finish so I like to rub over it before clear coating. Now I will clear coat this with lacquer much like was done originally but smoothing that out that's the underside. That looked relatively horrible. All right 
But that is an example of what I mentioned earlier about uh, the backsides either not being finished or uh, run with me, Connie, over here. Or much like this area up in here, the glaze not being wiped off whatsoever. There's uh, several places and on the back of the piano that are examples of where they just left the glaze dry. But for the purpose of the wood that's going to show, you paint on there, wipe it off. All right. Maybe we'll keep that maybe rubbed. Anyway, what I like to do is rub this out and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Turn it the way I'm just working on it right here. And maybe we can grab a still picture and do a before and after kind of a side by side thing. But this is clearly better than it was when we started more consistent. Then, really cold yet. Well, that about does it folks for this particular project unlike most of the projects that we film this was a one-off for me I have not done this previously so this is kind of more of a conversation starter uh, those of you that have experience repairing this type of finish feel free to throw some tips in the comments below and uh, thanks for watching